What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Montana Method Podcast. One more time, the host is always Nelson Rodriguez Jr., author of Montana Method. Super excited to have my guest here with you today. Dave from Spangus Generation, only person to be on my show three times, so you can tell how much I love her content. She permanently has the title of my favorite content creator forever. That's like official. Blah, put the stamp on it. <laughs> I'm super, super happy to have her on my show. We're going to get into what she's been up to. Some of the newer content she's been dropping is super, super, super funny. Um, we're going to get into it, so kick it. I've been out here hustling all my life. Every day we get into it. Really out here in these streets. That's day and night. Like there's nothing to it. When I was going through it, dog, I never got your call. I never asked for nothing, no. But now I want it all. I promise I'm going to do it. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches came from rags. Hey. What's up? What's up? How are you? Good, good, good. Thank yes. you for having me here. Of course. Again. Of course. You're always welcome here. Forever. This is like, I've been to your the past home and now I'm in the new home. This is nice. Yeah, yeah. It's more comfortable. You've seen all the versions of my show. You you saw it when it was like, when you bent on a microphone or on a I computer. Know. And you saw it in an official studio. And now you saw it in, in my spot and in my... My little yes. thing I'm doing. I love this. This is comfy. <laughs> it's cozy. You're expanding. Little by little. Congrats. Poco, poco. By the way, someone came into to my shop yesterday, and I have your book in the coffee table. And he picked up your book. He was like, is this book any good? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, my friend wrote it. He's like, oh, okay, I'll check it out. I was like, Awesome. You know. I just came out with the second edition. So Nice. Yeah, I revised it. It's all nice and pretty now, and every all the main ideas are underlined. And yeah, yeah, it's a little thicker now too. It's like a hundred pages. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So moving on up. Moving on up, poco a poco. You know, yeah. I have an audio book too. I don't know if you I know. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't. I haven't read. I, I've I've read the book. So you know, but um, if I hadn't read the book, then I would have gotten read, the yeah. audio book. Because it's usually easier for me. I've been told that, and this happened to me because my godfather is an author too, and he wrote a book. So when I was reading his book, I could hear his voice. There's, was that the hap what happened when you read my, like you would hear my, he's like, oh. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Bro, Medania, partió la risa with that last series of reels you did. Oh, oh the Cuban tourist. Bro, oh my God. <laughs> but isn't it real though? It's crazy, huh? Pete. <laughs> because because to sabe lo que pasa es que if you're even if you're not a Cuban, when you've seen tourists how they act Bro. cuando van a los países latinoamericanos, it's crazy, it's so yeah. funny. But then you think about it, y nosotros mismos we act like that when we go other places. Like it's a little reflection on on you know the tourists inside of all of us. Porque uno va a un lugar aunque sea que West Palm Beach and you already feel like a tourist <laughs> and you're like ay like you. no, but Miami's another another country. It's true. So you go anywhere north of Hollandale Beach, and it's it's another planet. It's another planet. It dude. really is. Miami is like Miami. You go south of Homestead or north of Hollandale, and it's otro mundo. Seriously, for real. Otro mundo. I was just I just got invited to a friend of mine's podcast that's premiering on Monday, and it's a Spanish podcast. And I was telling him Miami, bro. Yeah, I'm from the independent country of Miami. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> literally. I went to uh, to support a friend of mine who's a comedian that I had him on the show last week. His name is Laz. He's hilarious. He went to do an open mic at the Improv, and one of the other open micers, he's this Arab guy. He was like, I go to New York. New Yorkers tell me it's another country. I called my mom back in Saudi Arabia. Mommy, I'm here in New York, but apparently it's not part of the United States. Then what are, what are you? I don't understand. I thought New York was part of... And he's like, no, no, I thought so too. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I go to Miami, same thing. No, this is another country. You're not in the United States. Completely. Yo, if, but for real. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yes, for I real? know. We're like we're like a different a different genre. We're another animal. Yeah. You, and you either love it or you hate it. Yeah. It's either or. There's no in between. Either you, you can't live anywhere else or you can't live here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm one of those people. I can't live anywhere else. No, I don't think I could. I have, and I it, it hasn't worked. I ended up here again because I love Miami with all its pros and cons i love it with all its yeah yeah it's it's crazy, crazy insanity with all it's crazy yeah because you know i was raised here but miami's got a thing that kind of aligns with me mm. it's not for everybody though i get it definitely not for everybody and i will also say in spite of the people complaining oh my god it's so expensive uh no that when i left miami my life got better that's great 
the amount of people leaving is way less than the amount of people coming in. Absolutely. So there's something here that's working. Yeah. You know, I, whether it's the weather or the lifestyle, whatever it is, something's working because everybody Look, wants to be here. Right now, hay un montón de gente paddling snow y nosotros aquí estamos en chancleta and tank tops. <laughs> Forget it. I'll take I, Miami. I, I wouldn't ex bro, ese, when you, when you see him with that pico, chopping off all the ice Have off the windshield. Have you seen that? No. I'm good. No. Not for me. I'll take La Chusmeria and Jaelia. Absolutely. I'll take, take Mira. No. No, 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 no. In the fact that, no. Preaching to the choir because your company is like in, in Hialeah. Like in Hialeah. Yeah, in yeah, esquina yeah. de Hialeah. Yeah, straight <laughs> like, up. Literally. Like on the corner of, of like. Like know? we have Los Carritos Alonchero. They are like right no, there. The hood. It, there's, you know, and, and you know, there's yeah. East and there, esta está like right on, right by Palm Avenue in the, in literally. the middle. Donde está el, I'm saying literally a lot. What's up with that? Eh, donde estaba, donde está el casino ahora. Ahí al, a, a right dos there. Oh del, my God. Del hipódromo. Del hipódromo. Bro. Classic. That's how you know what's up. When you know hipódromo, mi tía abuela, Classic. Mimi, shout out to Mimi, te quiero. Uh -huh. Bro, she's like, no, tú, ah, sí, yo estaba pasando por ahí a leer un medical center en el lado del hipódromo. <laughs> and I was like, bro, el que hipódromo. Que era pasteo el medical center when I came from Cuba. Because we used to go there, and it wasn't para las personas mayores. It was like we had a family plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. the good old days, dude. Pastor, like eran otros tiempos. Funny enough, I know a friend of a friend is the son of the guy who used to own that place, and yeah. he sold it to Sun House for like a hundred million dollars. Of course. There's some disgusting amount of money. It's obscene. Yeah, yeah. A lot of things in Hialeah. No, I mean. A lot of things bro. in Hialeah. You know, I was talking about that this morning in my stories. Te puede gustar, you may hate it, pero Hialeah is... You remember that commercial? The, the, como era el pulguero de Hialeah antes? O Paloca Hialeah oh is a God. place to be. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. not going to go on with it because it was a little obscene, like the whole little song they made up with it. But like, honestly, it is a place to be. If For you sure. have a business, it's so central, like it's in the middle. You know, you're not too far south. You're not too far north. You're right in the middle. People can stop by, pick up, like, at least for us. So it's a really, really centralized place. And you can find everything there. Yeah, yeah. Like that everything, desde botones de hacer canastilla de niño to like sheet metal to auto parts. All down the same street. All you know, down the same you street. You go down 21st Street on Hialeah, it yes. and it's like you got the metro station. Tienes la botanica, Todo. Kenya's pet shop right there. Todo. You need some sheet metal, go see F&D. You, you get, know? coge un pollo, sale, coge tu plancha de metal, y después al lado está New York Bakery. You get some bread and you go home. You're good. Good to go. Call bro. it a day. Hialeah, it's one of, one of a kind. Yeah, it is. It is. It's intense. I'm not going to lie. It's funny because when people say, oh, you're from Hialeah, I, I have the tendency to be like, no. <laughs> but I was born in Hialeah Hospital, entonces me jodí. No, you're there. No, I'm, you're yeah, there. I'm from Hialeah. You're Hialeense. Yeah, yeah. At heart, dog. Like, for real. You're really from the, you're really hardcore. I just, there's nothing like it in the entire country. No, there's there isn't. nothing, nothing. Like, I can't think, even if the Bronx for Puerto Ricans or East LA for Mexicans, it's not the same. Hialeah for Cubans. Yeah. It's it's just another animal, bro. Did you know there was a Hialeah in Nicaragua? My friend from Nicaragua told me that there's a barrio in Nicaragua called, called Hialeah. Hialeah. And apparently it's How did that name <laughs> even transfer from Nicaragua to the United Cubans. States? Cubans. We take everything everywhere we go. So what was Hialeah originally? Do you know the story? God knows. I don't know what the name I don't know. I'll look it up after. I don't know. But that's what she told me. My friend from Nicaragua told me, you know, there's a Hialeah in Nicaragua. I was like, what? What? <laughs> yeah, apparently we took it there. Like in Managua or something? I don't know. That's crazy. I don't, but in barrio que se llama Hialeah. Dude. There has Out to be a... Out of all things, we would call it Hialeah. Yeah, but I, my first assumption obviously would be that like los comunistas de esto took it over there, but Hialeah is in America, so no, like, that can't it's, be... it's ours. It's ours. So how did that end up? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. That's, I'm curious, too. Now that I mentioned it to you, I'm like, wait a minute. You know what my, my next assumption is? Is maybe like Anika that ended up moving back to Nicaragua from Hialeah. Probably. Was like... Oh, it's, ah, mira, ve, ve, ve busca a Elia que vive ahí en la esquina. Could and be. and it, it was his neighborhood, and it just kind of like... Hay una pila de cubanos en Nicaragua. Mm, you're right, yeah. Hay oh, una pila de cubanos. Pero no de fly, ahora, or... pero no solamente de ahora, de antes. Oh, y okay. tú sabes que eh, Elia es para los cubanos lo que es Nueva York, es para los para dominicanos. Los y los yeah. dominicanos. Right. Cuando dicen, oh, voy para Nueva York, they could be going to Nebraska. Pero cuando tú dices Nueva York, es the whole yeah, United yeah. States. I mean, that's the thing about being Hispanic in the United States. If you're from Miami, you're Cuban. If oh, you're yeah. from New York, you're Puerto Rican <laughs> or Dominican. Yeah, I know. If you're from California, Texas, you're Mexican. I know. That's one thing I think about being Hispanic is that's really interesting. Like, we're the only race where you can confuse where we're from. I know. Because if you're if you're white, you're Caucasian. I mean, you could get into some antics about, oh, yeah, my grandfather was Scottish or Irish or whatever. Right. And it, if you're a black American, you're black. Yeah. But if I'm Hispanic, you can confuse and and 
possibly get offended, right? Because I know, bro, I've gone somewhere <laughs> and they'd be like, "Oh, you're Mexican," I'd be like. <laughs> What's wrong with you, dog? Which yeah. is no no offense, but like no, it's nothing weird against Mexicans. They as, right, but they assume everybody's Mexican. And yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. what's that the no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's funny because speaking of which, cuando yo vivía en Arizona, there was this Mexican she was a Mexican American, which but I But that's like to not make fair. You're in Phoenix. That's like Mexican territory. That's like literally right Mexican. next to yeah, 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 but she didn't know Cuban spoke Spanish. I don't know what to say about that. I don't know me either. Let's move on. <laughs> Oh my God, that's so funny. So, but going back to that, another thing, I think you and I have talked about this, like when we, when we texted each other one day. I don't like being called a Latino at all. I reject it. I've I've learned to grow to to like the term. No, to live with the term. I I much rather do Hispanic just because yes. I was raised with the term. Yes, I'm more comfortable with it. Hundred percent. Quite honestly. I've learned to live with Latino just because it's so broad now. But I, I get I it. But even even like New York Puerto Ricans and New York Dominicans identify themselves in that. And they're actually closer to us than they are to like the Absolutely. term Latino. Yeah. If you're talking Latino, how many languages came from Latin? Romanian, Italian, Portuguese, Agreed. Spanish, French. So, oh, no, Latino America, because you, you were derivative of Latin. Right. So why don't you call French people Latinos? Exactly. Why don't you call Romanians Latinos? Exactly. So... That doesn't make any sense. Hispanic to me is a little more accurate because we derive from Spain. I right. get it. You know? Y hablamos español. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. And then you could even, but here's here's my, okay, you want to call Latin America, right. Latinos. Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic is not a part of that. Right. And then if you look up the literal definition, the first <coughs> first country that was settled in Latin America was Haiti. Right, right. What's going on? You know? Oh, entonces los haitianos son latinos, pero los franceses no. It's like, right. dude, <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Make it's up your a, mind. It's a whole arroz con mango. I, I just prefer, and I correct people. No, okay, tú eres latino. I'm like, can you call me Hispanic? I, I'd appreciate it. No, yeah. That. I think it's a, think of a matter of preference. I prefer Hispanic. Yeah. But I've, I've, ya yo misma uso la palabra latino because I've, you know, I've grown accustomed to it. But I prefer Hispanic and I do reject and forever will reject the term Latinx. No, that that's that's already that like, is like yeah. If you want to talk about series like you're gonna tell me how to speak my language. No, that's, no madre. that that's pretty, you know. I just I reject AOC and all her <laughs> ignorance and <laughs> B O Q in the name. Yeah, of esa gente, you know, all of them say that <laughs> white men are the devil and they're all married to white men. Don't even <laughs> Ay, that's so funny. No, it's it's right? hilarious. It's hilarious. White men are it's the biggest threat. Oh, okay. Kamala Harris, Blanca, Eta, Ilian Omar, no. married to a white dude. The, the other one with a white dude. That's so weird. Yeah. So it's uh, it's pretty funny. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously. But anyway, so what's new? Um, talk to me. I, I mean, the last time we recorded was a year ago. So what's uh, what's been new? Time flies, dude. It doesn't feel like a year ago. Yeah. A lot of new things. The thing is that I've been really busy with personal and business. Mm. So, you know, content creation for me is like something that I do because I like but not because I'm obligated to. And in a sense, right, right, right. I wish I kind of was because that would give me more sense of... Like consistency. Right. To like actually sacar tiempo and be disciplined about content creation. But since it's something that I do as a hobby, no lo tomo con esa seriedad. Mm. However, there are things coming up because I, I love it. You know, but in the, I love creation in the bigger sense of things. I love to create things. Y yo, aunque no esté haciendo cosas como antes, con tanta frecuencia, I'm still very, you know, active in my stories. Yo, en mi, en mi espacio personal, I write a lot. Mm. Yo tengo muchas cosas escritas for future. You know, I don't know what may come from that. Pero definitivamente, things happening in our business side that we need to concentrate on a lot. ¿Tú me entiendes? Y eso me, me ocupa tiempo, but a lot of new things are coming. That's cool. I don't ever see myself, to sabe, if detaching from content creation. It's I've created content since I was eight. Mm. Yo escribía desde que soy chiquita. So, I mean, this new era of social media and stuff just gives me a different platform to do what I've always done. You know what I've done with you? And I'll say it publicly because I've never really like acknowledged this. Whenever someone wanted to give me an excuse as to, no, I can't do what you do. I've been like, come here. I went by your page and I'm like, you see this lady? This lady has two kids. So he has a, he's married, has a, and she still does this. And look at, and look at her TikTok. And I went by your TikTok and they're like, 
damn, bro. I'm like, yeah. I, I use you as the example of like, bro. When, so, thank you. you. You're welcome. Not only does she do it, in spite of everything, she has more than you going on. So let's start with that. Don't get, bring me your excuses. On top of that, the content is good. It's educational. It's funny. It's entertaining. You you encompass so many things, you know, which is really hard because you can, from one minute, you're hilarious. The next minute, you're very serious. The minute after that, it's just you and your kids. You know, it's yeah. not even... So you you do a very good job of encompassing everything together. I'm glad. Thank you for saying that. Of course. It's... I watch not too much TV. So I saw Tiene Que You know, I pick and choose what I watch. I'm very specific. Yo no soy de sentarme and I have to find something to watch just mm. because yo no me voy para de ahí and, you know, find something else to do. No, I'm always thinking... If I'm watching TV, I better love this, you know, yo la pago, because I could do something better. Right. Whether it's organize my closet or, tú sabes, lavar ropa, which I have a mountain of right now in la casa. That's pretty common for me. <laughs> Entonces, tú te pones a pensar, there's always time for the things that you want to do. 100%. You may not be able to allocate all the time you'd want, but there's always time. Mm. So, a veces, por ejemplo, when we were starting our business, yo a veces me acostaba, ahí está Felipe, no me va a dejar mentir, tres de la mañana, mm. with my son, dormido en una, en una cosita, I don't want to make this analogy, como si fuera una mascotica, no, en I un know. colchoncito al lado de mí, ahí, porque we were doing estimados, and we were, and it were the starts, and at the same time, por el día, every little moment I could squeeze, I would record stuff, not necessarily to use immediately, but so I could have it, It for later, later use. Yeah. So, and look, I, like you said, I have two kids. Si yo no estoy cambiando un pañal, I am feeding someone. O estoy, tú sabes, it, it's, it's a never-ending situation. But when you want to do things, you really want to do things, you do them. You do them. Period. You know? And my son has taught me that a lot. Both my children, but mm. my son, you know, que tiene una discapacidad. He's disabled. So, life is a whole challenge for him, like in general. And to see that kid struggle and actually move forward, I'm like, heck, I can do it. Mm. Whatever, you know? I can do whatever I need to do, whatever I want to do. ¿Quién me dice a mí que yo no puedo hacer lo que yo tenga que hacer? Isn't it crazy how things that could crush somebody else, you, a person like you and me can find the biggest lesson in? That's insane. That's insane. Like, people, now I'm very open about me going to jail and all that stuff. Going, sorry, going to prison, because jail is when you get drunk. <laughs> so when you get pulled over and you have a deal, that's when you—that's jail. I, I even correct. Aclara. Have you seen that that series, the uh, Sylvester Stallone, Tulsa King? No, bro. Is it good? Está buenísimo. Verdad? Talk about like coming out with some really good stuff. At, like, I like Sylvester. He's a G. I love him. And you know, he's a conservative. I know. <laughs> I know. But I know That's why he didn't participate in this last yeah, Creed yeah, yeah, situation. Yeah. No, and what I love about him is that he's very, he's been, he's had so much success that at this point he can do lo que le da la gana. Lo que le salga del foro. You know, so it's like, he's like 72, still kicking ass, still doing great movies and film. And it's like, I don't have a filter anymore. <laughs> I love him. He's, oh, uh, but anyway, it's, it came out a while ago. I saw, I don't know if they okay. came out. It's good. It's like eight episodes. It's not too I'll long. I'll check it out. Bro, so good. Oh, so it's it's short. Yeah, it's oh, short. good, yeah, even yeah, better. Because yeah, yeah. now yeah, yeah. I'm not doing seasons. Anima I'm doing limited series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And imagine you know, like in the era of TV shows, he's one of those guys who's never done a TV show. That's true. So for him to do a TV show, it has to be good. Yeah, you know? yeah. Same thing with Al Pacino. He's never done a TV show. He did that one TV show. What was it called? Hunters or whatever. But yeah, like when when certain actors do, t you're like, all right, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna watch. watch. Yeah, I'll check that out. Super, 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 super good. I don't know if you've seen that viral clip of him in a suit where he's like, there's a certain point in life where you can't go back. You I know? think, yeah. That was from that show. Up, yeah. It's from that show, yeah. Okay, I got to check it out. So, segue, or full circle. If in the very beginning, the guy, his character does 26 years in prison. Oh my gosh. So he gets out and someone's like, oh, you went to jail? And he's like, I went to prison. Jail's where you go when you go, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it's like, un mafioso que hizo 26 años. Right. You know, so you're like, like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so ever since Get I saw that, I'm going to clarify. I went to prison. I didn't go to jail. Exactly. Yeah, para que la gente no... Anyway, but it was the same for me. What, like, you think that your life is going to be over? And the things, I learned things in there that were like, I met people that changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. I met a guy who was a Buddhist. Really? And the guy... The spiritual stuff he taught me, in I was... In prison. Bro. 
He, he read the Quran, the Bible, and the Torah. And another book called The, Z the Compass of Zen. And I would sit with him for hours. Okay. Hours. And I would just be like, huh. It's an interesting. He's like, no name, no attachments. I'll never forget it. No name, no attachments. Your name. That's interesting. You are not your name. You are not Day. I am not Nelson. That's a made up word. Right. People use to identify you. But, right. And he'll go, who are you? Well, I'm Nelson. No, 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 no. Who are you? Right. I'm. That's deep. I'm a 30 year old failure that went to prison. No, 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 no. Who are you? And that simple question just made, like, shit. Yeah. Who am I? Because I was very identified to my 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 status. Right. Right? I owned a business. I was a, an entrepreneur. I had all these titles that I gave myself. And then right. once I got in trouble, all that was gone. Claro. And my life fell apart. And then I, it's funny because it happened before I met him. I was like, damn, who am I? That's why I wrote the book. Because I said, if I die tomorrow, there's... There's no proof I was here. So I wrote the book to leave something behind. Right. And then I meet this guy who's a Buddhist and he says, who are you? I said, wow. Such a simple question. Yeah. Right? yeah. No, and I, it's no simple answer to that. And that's one person and one experience I had in there. I read 31 books. I read the Iliad for the first time in my life. Read that? 550 pages. I read it in three days. That's a lot. Dude. Oh, you had a lot of time. So many. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Five months of... You know what? You know what? Though in those five months, I accomplished more than I would have done in five years. Like, of course, because you have nothing but time for yourself. Glad. You know, so yeah, it's and people feel really uncomfortable because you have it's nothing but you, and it's just the same reason some people are constantly looking for something to watch, something to listen to, someone to talk to, uh, you can't be constantly with scrolling. You can't be with yourself. And with me, I've gotten so comfortable. Day, I'm I'm by myself like half my day. I'm not exaggerating. Right. Before, I would hit somebody, hey, let's go eat dinner. <laughs> and it's now, like, why would I do that before? Right. It's okay to be alone. It is. You know? So, yeah, yeah it's th it taught me a lot. And the older you get, you'll crave to be alone. Mm. At least for the most part, that's what happens to most people. And now I'm starting to understand why. You know? Ya te molesta ese... No que te moleste. You don't need it as much. So you can totally live without that constant interaction and validation. Porque casi siempre lo que uno busca es alguien que te escuche and not only he listens, pero validates what you're saying. Like, you know, you need that feedback. 100%. Um, pero yeah, you, you brought up an excellent point. It's hard to be with yourself because then you have to face all these questions that you have mm. that really sometimes don't have an answer. Or sometimes you do have an answer. You just don't want to face wanna it. Don't want to say it. You know, and then cuando tienes esa, ese momento de estar tranquilo and actually tune in, because you could be by yourself, but not necessarily tuned in with yourself. 100%. Tú puedes estar distraído en 20 cosas, no necessarily television. Puedes estar haciendo, un, tú sabes, entretenido. When you actually sit down and you have a real conversation with yourself and you ask yourself that question, who are you? And the next question, where are you going? Y a veces tenemos la respuesta, pero la, it's so difficult to pursue que nos da miedo. We chicken out. 150%. We have the answers. Not all the time, but most of the time. We already know what to do. You know what I've noticed? When I, those questions I used to ha not have answers for, I know the answer. It's just, it's easier to say I don't. So you haven't, so I'll speak for myself. Oh, I have the excuse. No, I don't know. I just don't know. Right. No, you know. You know. <laughs> you know. You know. You you very well know. Absolutely. Sitting, just sitting still, and I've noticed that all the it's not about searching for answers out there. Right. They, all the answers are, are in here. When you have as the the specific attitude that's needed to move forward, forget it. Everything falls into place. Like mm. no one can stop you. When you depend on external sources. Never get anything done. Nunca. Never. Jamás y nunca. Yo el otro día, I'm a Christian, you know? So I have a certain set of beliefs that I believe drive me forward. Right. I believe my faith is a huge contributor to whatever success. And I, I when I say success, I mean mostly inner peace mm. and emotional status more than anything material. 
So I believe that my faith has contributed to that. Y yo el otro día, yo estaba viendo un TikTok, because, you know, TikTok does get spiritual from time to time. <laughs> and I got lost on that side of TikTok. <laughs> y me salió, the algorithm decided to show to me un TikTok de una, de un... You know, these little memes que this is what people think something's like and this is what it's actually like. Mm -hmm. And it's got, of course, Gangster's Paradise blowing in the background. So I'm already hooked. I'm ding, like, yes, I'm ding, done. I'm here. Ding, I'm ding, engaged. Ding, right? Ding. <laughs> ah, whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Every time that's on a reel, it's like the most spiritual. And this guy's talking about like <laughs> being a gangster. Like, you know? <laughs> with my G's. And then it's like <laughs> Rest in peace, Coolio. He died. Like I love Coolio. That's yeah, another yeah. one. But oh, well, okay, 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 whatever. Um, Coolio was really intellectual. He was. So, but besides the point, this reel comes up. Yes, they said, this is what people think Caribbeans, los Caribbeans. Is that how you say Caribbeans? Caribbeans. What? Caribbeans. You call them, is that what, how you say it? You say Caribbeans? No, los Caribbeans, like the angels. Like, lo, the, there's a, the, okay, okay, uh, Nelson. Heard, I was right. like, Nelson, are Explain you saying that. Caribbean right now? No, I assume Caribbean. Because I was like, <laughs> so I was going to say Caribbean now. And it's like Caribbean angels. Caribbean. Car Querubines. Querubines. Es un tipo de ángel. In the Bible, like están los ángeles. And how, say, how do you say in English? That's what I'm trying to figure out exactly. Oh, you don't know how to say in English. <laughs> Bro, I'm asking you and you're talking about Caribbeans. I'm like, no, se no. Tú, tú te imaginas que yo salgo por allá afuera calling los querubines Caribbeans. Querubines. Like they're Jamaican. Oh. Okay, so listen. Le, <laughs> Jamaican <laughs> angels, Cuban <laughs> angels, Puerto Rican angels. That's funny. Anyway. Um, like in Los Ángeles, hay... Angeles Guardian, the guardian angels. Right. Después están los archangels and stuff like that. Like there, there's, you know, una jerarquía. Right. Y llega un, un tipo de ángel que son los querubines, mentioned in the Bible. Which are where? Where do they right. fall? Like they're like up there. Like they're not really in contact con nosotros. They're in charge of guarding el universo. Like it's a different, it's a different level. Okay. All right. right. So estoy hablando de how the Bible, you So know, they're pretty up there. They're pretty. They're pretty up. They're, 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 they're but they're like of, Michael, Raphael, like that high? Or? No, yo, it, it, no. They're, they're like, it's a different job. Almost up there. Almost up there. Got Te it. voy a explicar. I see the real que dice, this you, is how. You know that sounds like, you know what that sounds like to me? And I know you, uh, that sounds like the, los oricha. Okay, okay, okay. Don't even, okay, yes. Okay, go Pero ahead. Espérate. I'll, I'll go back to Pero that. Pero espérate. Yeah. Yeah, like, that. because you're, you'll make that connection. Entonces. I was watching this because I'm trying to make a point because, you know, it takes me an hour to make a point. Right. So we may finish this podcast and I'm not done with this point. Y entonces, yo estaba viendo que dice, you, this is how, what people think los querubines. And I'm just going to say los querubines because if I say Caribbeans, I'm, I'm lost. The type, this type of angel. Okay. <laughs> Caribbeans, querubines. Right. This is what people think a querubine looks like. And it has los muñequitos, you know, the little babies yeah, the little with the little cupid, angels, yeah, cupid, little yeah. cupid-like angels. And then it says, and this is how the Bible actually describes them. And it puts unas imágenes, of course, to sabe, eh, animated. And I was like, let me refer back to my Bible because a mí se me había olvidado esa, right. you know, the Bible yeah, verse. ¿Tú yeah. me entiendes? So yo busco en Ezequiel, and Ezekiel describes los querubines. And then, cuando yo vi las imágenes, I'm like, this is exactly how the Bible describes them. Y son criaturas que tienen una situación de fuego, you know, y tienen cabezas, diferentes cabezas, de águila, de toro, de león. So when you say orillas, you, you can see how I, how it kind of connects in the sense of when you visualize that, it's not anything normal. Es una cosa de, fuera de este mundo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tienen seis alas. Like, they are creatures created to guard a certain aspect of the glory of God and the universe. Mm. Entonces, cuando yo vi eso, and I'm like, wait a minute, dude. Like, if you're really a Christian, porque yo critico mucho, mucho esto de los cristianos, que, including myself, viven quejándose all the time. Ay, que la vida, ay, que yo no puedo más, ay, que mira. Entonces, espérate, pero if you're a Christian and you believe in the type of God that would create a creature like that, and you actually believe it, because the other thing is también que los que no son cristianos, también puede empezar, pero tú sabes, who would write that? Like, honestly. Cuatro cabezas, un toro, un águila, like, eso es alguien que se dio un pase y lo escribió, and they're just saying, <laughs> you know, what kind of psychedelic <laughs> que, oye, que are you eso. on? Like, honestly, like, I understand. Que se metió tremendo que, hongo. No, I get it. <laughs> For real. <laughs> I'm like, what, what portobello were you munching on? No, honestly, I get it. When people are that are not believers are like, no, <laughs> no. Tú me entiendes? Like, because you're talking about Noah and the ark. And then what happened to the other animals? How come we have so many? Like, I have right, questions. Right, 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 right. And I get it. 
Pero if you're a true Christian and you believe by faith que estas cosas de verdad sucedieron and they are the way the Bible describes them, then we should really have no reason to be scared. Because see, a mí me, 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 I'm backed up by this creature that has this huge imagination de que creo estas otras criaturas. Like, what am I, what am I? When it says, the Bible says, do not be afraid mm. because you're backed up by that. 100%. So, entonces, yo te digo, to sum it up, I believe que en mi opinión, my personal experience has been that my faith has led me to a place where fear is almost irrelevant. Because I do believe in something greater. And I believe that something greater has my back to the point that I don't really need to worry all that much. And when I do start to worry, estoy comiendo de lo que pica el pollo. Because there's nothing to worry about, mm. honestly. Porque yo considero que in the universe hay mucho más bien que mal. If not, we wouldn't have this planet. We wouldn't have this equilibrium, this balance that we have. Nuclear que nos mantiene war would have happened a very long time ago. So, tú like, sabes, el mundo, the, the world has gone to caca. But, uh, I mean, compared, still, compared to what? To, co, to when we killed correct. each other for sport in the, in the Roman Colosseum. You know what I mean? También. It, exactly. I, I get so irritated so, day when people are like, no, that the world's the worst it's ever been. That's why you don't have to worry for your safety 24 hours a day. That's why you don't have to, like, you, you don't walk into a saloon and get shot because you owe somebody two cents. You know, these ridiculous things that people say nowadays sometimes, I'm just like, dude, come on, really? We're in the worst time to... This is the best time to ever live. I agree. It's the easiest time to make money. Tú puedes ser un bobo de cualquier país that gets here tomorrow, you have a job. Exactly. Not only that, in a year... You know how many people I've seen that it, within a year of getting to this country, they own a business? Sí. You know, like... Not only that, sí. how about... How many people do you and me know that... And I'm not saying we mutually know them, but... Examples we can point to where they're nobody and they're making money online... They're an influencer. They get paid by this company to announce Pero 100%. this. 100%. And they're like tremendo... I don't, need, I don't want to call them anything insulting, no, no, but whatever. No, no, 100%. So it's like, dude, it's the easiest time to be independent and make money. It's one of the most prosperous times. No, not one of the most. It's the most prosperous time in human history. Yeah. Everything has become very, very... Not easy, but simple. No, I It's know. very simple to do things when you want to do them. So with what base are you telling me that it's oh la, la vida está loca el mundo se ha vuelto loco ah. es que cuando we have so much privilege tenemos demasiado tiempo para complicarnos la cabeza 150% so since we can't be worried about the basics because the basics are so covered right now no matter what anybody says yes everything's difficult to get what like you said in co compared to what cuando tenía que las mujeres I don't have to go to the river para lavar los culeros de niño yeah. because I have disposable diapers like, like tribes in Africa that have to you know walk hundreds of miles just to get a bucket of water to drink we become too comfortable and pray to God that you don't get sick from that water o que te come un león no. o una hiena on the way like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, bro yeah that's what I'm saying like so compared to what you yeah know? so I think when I say the world has gone to caca I mean our brains morally really, morally no we're weak Yeah, morally, pero también morally, eh, hace tiempo también estuvieron morally, de, right. tú sabes, desviados, pero a nivel, it, they're cycles, they're 100%. cycles, and we're going through our own cycle, but I think that si nosotros, de verdad, pasáramos un poquito más de trabajo, it'd be good for us, pero no, pero we, we try to make everything so comfortable, que estamos, we're spoiled, so, so that podcast I told you, I just did this morning that I was invited to, I pointed out something, and I was like, man, Cubans, no matter what country they go to, Bro, within a year, six months, están, they're getting it, bro. Their kids are in school. They have money, a little bit of money saved up. They have a car. Yeah. They have a job. The wife is is doing nails part-time. The guy is opening a landscaping business. They're on it. Mm. Why? Porque nos morimos de miseria en Cuba. Because yeah. you're so deprived of opportunity and so deprived of, of, a, of a, a chance to have a better life that when you get to a place that even has a minimal opportunity, you take it. You take it and you take it running. Explotas. Costa Rica, Colombia, Spain, Mexico, United States. I don't care what country it is. Any Anywhere you'll go and they'll be like, no, yeah, there's a cute boom. He has a little hot dog stand. Yeah. He has a restaurant. He has a bar. He owns a landscaping bed. She's She cleans houses. She does nails. You, everywhere. I've yeah. gone and I've traveled the world. I've been to a, a bunch of... Every time I run into a Cuban, that's the situation. Yeah. And it's because of the hardship that we go through. Yeah. It never fails. Hardship, there's a, uh, not to quote uh, Andrew Tate or anything, but I, I saw something he said that was, it was true. He says, my biggest blessing in life was growing up shit poor because yeah. it's, it, 
the most successful people are the people who have nothing and then have that. They're like, oh my God, yes. Like I want, this is what I want in life. And that's what propels them versus having everything and, and starting off with everything in life. You don't really have much motivation to. And to add to that, I think that part of what makes a difference between Porque Cuba no es Cuba, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, of course. Pero what makes a difference between uh, Cubans y ahora Venezuela. Right. And a lot of Nicaraguans ahora. They, right. uh, sadly, they're starting to understand what the Cubans have been through. For, es que no solamente es hardship de economía that because Cuba's poor. It's because hay un sistema in place that prevents them from moving forward. 100%. Porque, por ejemplo, hay pobreza en México, pero los mexicanos echan para adelante. Y tú right. ves que los mexicanos también tienen sus hot dogs, sanitas, sus cosas. El sistema favorece that they flourish that way right. if they wish to. Right. Um, so it, they have that mindset in place. El cubano no. El cubano has had to be, transform its mindset cuando sale. Y eso que tú dijiste, cuando, cuando ven la más mínima oportunidad, like, what? This is, are you, can you, this is possible? Y por eso corren con eso. Y, y muchas veces, tú sabes, la, los resultados son increíbles. Y no es que sean mejor que nadie, es que la, la mentalidad se ve abierta de 0 a 100 de pronto, lo que es normal en un país capitalista por tantos años, un país libre, vamos a decir, por tantos años, en Cuba no es normal. O sea, un adulto que sale de Cuba, después de haber vivido en Cuba 30, 40 años, cuando llega a los Estados Unidos, no sabe ni siquiera el right. significado de mortgage, mm -hmm. lo que es una hipoteca. They, like, they don't know these terms, simple terminology, que los argentinos, que los uruguayos, everybody knows. No, it's Cubans don't know. So when they see this, they're like, are you kidding me? This is like, we got this. You mean these people have this? Just, and 100%. what? Entonces, es donde tú te das cuenta. Everybody can do it, man. And not only that, my dad talks to me about like his era where he went to, you know, that he was my grandfather. My, I, my grandfather was, I don't know what the proper term is, un jefe allá, like to corta caña. Bro, and he used to, he's like, bro, I went two days. I, whenever I was little, he's like, <laughs> and I was like, dude, no. <laughs> yeah, bro. For real. So dude. they go from that. My dad told me a story one time and I was like, dude, he was in my uncle's car in Cuba and the car snapped. One of the belts in the motor snapped mm -hmm. and he had to pull all over the car. You know, this big I'm in drawing, the 56 Bel Air. Bro, he saw a piece of rope on the side of the road, tied it into the end. Clad. That's it. That was his. And that's how he made it home. Like, I can't. You hear See, those stories? That, yeah, I know. You hear those stories and you're just like, dude, what, what? excuse? What's my excuse right now? <laughs> I, know. I know. What is my so? Yeah, we have it all, really. We do, we do, and it's. But again, why? Because that's where we come from. Yeah. Come, there's something about coming from adversity. This this sounds crazy. It was discovered that, and this was a research study done. The right, there's a specific amount of trauma in a person's life where it's, it propels them. It shoots them like, right, where too much is just crippling and not enough is like, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's necessary yes. for growth. Hundred percent. You have to. Like when you're, you know, now ahora que tú estás, te veo que tú estás ahí en, en tu todo dándole al gym y todo eso. You know what happens to the muscles cuando uno está trabajando los músculos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go through this process that they're tearing up where. Too much is putting so much strain que te puede causar injury. Right. But just enough makes the muscle sentir como que, wait a minute, necesito ponerle, I need to step up because I need to, you know, meet right, my right. match. Y, y, and what the muscle's actually going through is un pequeño destruction, the tissue. Yeah. So lo mismo pasa a nivel emocional. There's a destruction of our inner something to make it stronger to support the load que está, que está viniendo. So... It, yeah, it's necessary. And I think that we are afraid of it and we run away from it. But a veces la vida te lo da obligatoriamente. It's like, here, toma. Boom. Handle that. Yep. And then you have to put your, you know, big girl panties on, in my case. Um, I, well, no, you wouldn't put we're, any we're, big girl panties on. Not me, on. but we're in 2024. I mean, I don't think you would. We're in 2024. So not me, but, but, you know, but then anyone would at that's, this point. You know, yeah. yeah okay. The whole, everything yeah, going on. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> All right, yeah. I don't want to get demonetized, so that I'm not monetized yet. Anyway, it's okay. This is my <laughs> Dude, oh man, does yeah. anybody in the room believe they're a pink panda? <laughs> Let me just take a sip of water. <laughs> 
Eka, there's a lot going on. You know Bro. what I'm saying? There's a lot crazy going on. And, you know, the thing is, Nelson, que I'm a person who believes que la persona, todas tienen derecho a expresarse. 100%. But there comes a point where, where do you draw the line between encouraging someone to continue to move on and, and in enabling this state? Them. Yeah, and enabling. That you see a crippling, you yeah, see yeah. where they're heading. Like, how do you have the heart to con- allow that and encourage that? 100%. Instead of saying, man, esto, esto necesita un poquito de ayuda yeah, to, yeah. You know, to kind of guide. To get some direction so here. So what yeah. I see is that these enablers, lo que, eh, con la el disfraz de empowerment and allies, lo que están haciendo es empujando a la gente, and it's sad. Yeah. It's sad because hay mucha gente that you're seeing go down a certain path. This, this can't be happening right now. This is what happens when I take Felipe places, dude. Like, <laughs> when this is this is a live podcast. I told him, "Abaga eso." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all right. No big deal. Qué fuerte. Oh, man. <laughs> you chose so. him. <laughs> you chose him, not me. I know. <laughs> uh, well, that was a good choice. I'm not gonna lie. It hey, was a good choice. I hope so. Yeah, it was a good choice. It was a good choice. Then that's. Tú sabes it. cómo está la calle. Mija, I'm 31 okay, and single. Okay, 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 okay. Yo tengo 31 años and I'm single, bro. You serious? La calle. I know so it better you know. than anybody. So you know. <laughs> Trust me. I'm not single. If I want, if I really, <laughs> if I had it up to me, I'd be married with kids by now. Damn, I dude. God, it's crazy. I want to have a family. I want to have a great woman. It's I want to have kids. My sister's had a kid for nine years, bro. Oh. So imagine my, my mom is like, what? When is your shirt? <laughs> like, what's happening? Oh, but you're a guy. And here's the machi- here's the, the 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 sexist Hispanic woman in me. You're a man. You can wait. You're gonna afford it. Uh, if you were a woman, I'd be like, bro, <laughs> um, apurate because no, but that's biology. It's different. Por eso. Yeah, Por eso. yeah, it's different. It, we no, do but, have that biological clock. Eh? But still, eso eso es bonito. Yeah, like tener hijo, estar casado, like being married, having a, a bro. Listen, first of all, there's no comparison. When you're young and you're single and you're chasing all these different women, you have no priorities in life. You're distracted. You're not focused. When you finally settle down and you have a good woman who has good judgment, who has your best interest at heart, there's no comparison. No, there isn't. None. There isn't. And we and I understand that people want to be alone at certain stages, you know, in their lives. Porque a veces, <laughs> hay que estar solo. A veces, there, you do. Okay? Of um, pero we are meant to have that level of companionship y compenetración sure. con otro ser humano. You know For what sure. I'm saying? So we are meant to to have that encounter and that that experience. So, eh, de verdad, no, I'm blessed. No te puedo decir otra cosa. You know, because Felipe is, is, is he's ideal for me. Porque I'm a whole situation that's not easy to, to handle. ¿Tú me entiendes? Eh, yo tengo, tú sabes, <laughs> my way of saying things and it's very offensive to people. Eh, Siempre estoy gritando. Apparently, yo siempre estoy, tú sabes, telling people what to do. I'm very bossy. So people feel, you know, when I say people, I, I mean a lot of men que me han dicho, tú me entiendes, like, no, que tú, tú eres muy, tú eres muy um, mandona. But, you know, it's the way I am. <laughs> what can I tell you? I can't tell you anything else. So la persona que, que and there are a lot of women like me. My mom is like me. Mm. There are a lot of women like me. Y no es que seamos mandona. We, we don't do it on purpose. But if there comes along, la persona that understands que tú no lo estás haciendo por mandarlo, que entiende what you are about porque no tienen complejo de que alguien uh, lo está mandando todo el tiempo. Bro. And that's the issue. No yeah. solamente con, con los hombres. Yeah. Hay muchas mujeres complejistas. Entonces, te encuentras con una mujer que tiene, tú sabes, her saying things y quiere hacer las cosas de una manera y si tú eres un tipo bastante complejado, you're going to think que, ay, esta quiere hacer conmigo lo que quiera. Instead of saying, contra, this is a person that can help me move forward porque mira la actitud que tiene. 100%. And she could be a boss in her own way and I, and I don't have to be a boss over her or she, has, she doesn't have to be a boss over me. We could be bosses together and move forward in our own different realm. ¿Tú me entiendes? Como mm. un equipo. Pero lo que pasa es que, tú sabes, igual que cuando la mujer es complejada. No, que él es machista. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's just trying to protect you and trying to take care. I, I, I so limited. But you have to learn to, to, tú no puedes guiar todo in such a, through such a filter that everything is affecting you. Todo el mundo quiere hacerte daño. Because then you can't hold una relación for no, jamás. Forget it. Yeah, there's going back to trauma and past experiences and all that stuff. Eso es un problema que that's common. Not, like people drag those past experiences into their present, like partners or situations or yeah. people that they meet. 
and you, and so many opportunities get ruined. You could have met a great person, but because of all that baggage you drag into this situation that has nothing to do with that person, you know, it's it's stupid. Uh, and I have a very controversial opinion when it comes to this. I think trauma is an excuse sometimes. Trauma is real, but at the end of the day, like, so what? Trauma you know? is real, but I agree that sometimes we utilize it as an excuse. When we shouldn't. Yeah. You know when how many people I've met that are like, oh, no, because you don't know what I've been through. I don't care. Like, <laughs> everybody's been through something. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> you don't know what I've been through. What does that have to do with anything? I don't care. I agree. <clears throat> Porque lo que pasa es que, Nelson, you have a mindset. You're a fighter. <clears throat> You're not a whiner. <laughs> tú me entiendes? Tú no yeah. eres whiny, whiny. Te sientas allá quejarte. You're a fighter. You get through things. You're, you're a problem solver. I Entonces, la gente no entiende. A mí me pasa lo mismo. Hay gente que viene a llorarme cosas. And Bro, I'm like, I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, and that's me. me. River. If, I can imagine being you and someone like, no, but you don't know. And I'm like, yeah, you don't know, guy. <laughs> what, what have you been through that I don't deal with like on a daily basis? You know what I mean? Finding out you're going to have a disabled child. I went through that. <laughs> Niño, yo siempre le digo a la gente una cosa. Hasta hoy. I'm my 43. I'm 43. I'm 43. I'm going to be 44 the, at the end of this year. Bro, you have great genes. I do have you. great genes. Seriously. No, I do. My parents both say one thing and being. No, I'm serious. Um, you, it's you a thing. You don't look. 40. It's a thing. I'm serious. You don't I've been told. I've been told. Um, we look the same age. Oh, I don't think I look 31. I think I look 35. No, but when, I, I would. But if, I'll take if I saw you on the street and I had never met you, you, I would think maybe you were like a, a year or two older than me. Okay. Like 33, 34. Okay. Uh, that's not, perfect. But not, not past that. I wouldn't think you were any older than that. So I'm going to be 44 this year. That's a good, that's a good number. Um, y lo que pasa es lo siguiente. I always tell people, the worst thing that could ever happen to me has already happened. So? Yeah, exactly. Has already happened. No es que yo me tengo que sentar. Bro. I'm sure there are worse things. But to me, the worst thing that could ever happen is que de pronto te... Y no es que... I love my son to death. Pero todo madre and every parent wants their son to be completely healthy. Healthy. Yo, tú no me vas a sentar a mí decirme aquí, uh, would you change your son? I would never change my son. But if I could have the healthy version of him... I would choose that in a heartbeat over anything that I have that I have achieved in life. Si tú me dices ahora mismo, desaste de todo lo que tú has adquirido en la vida, tu negocio, whatever you buy, esto aquí, esto allá. But your son is healthy. Te lo regalo en un dos por tres. Because, the, because that's the aspiration of any parent. Y entonces, tú me vas a venir a decir a mí, no, oh, I can't make my mortgage payment. Honey, deal with it. Are you working two jobs? No, because I'm tired. Mama, I'm tired. Mm. No, porque lo que pasa es que imagínate tú que yo me deprimo. Oh, really? I spent five to six months of my life with a nervous, con este ojo, que se me cerraba la visión. For six hours of the day, blurred vision. El ojo ticking. Un sentimiento de um, frío, todo el cuerpo. Like I was walking by inertia. Parecía que estaba en un, una cosa de hielo cubierta. Si yo me movía como si estuviera flotando. I had no idea what was going on. Porque yo estaba pasando el trance de enterarme que Alexander, my son, I didn't know he was disabled hasta los cinco meses después de nacido. Wow. So to me, I had a perfect baby. Y cuando las cosas empezaron a evolucionar, my world slowly came crumbling down. So I was like, ¿qué está pasando? You know, what they, y entonces, a lot of people that have had children con, con disabilities can relate to this. Entonces viene una persona y te dice, no, porque imagínate tú que yo no puedo pagar esto y no puedo pagar lo otro. And my question is, bueno, ¿cuánto, how many jobs do you have? Tengo uno. Why aren't you working a second part, a part time at Olive Garden waiting tables on the weekends? Why is that not, why is that not a thing? No, porque imagínate tú, porque estoy cansado y tengo un problema en la asiática. I wake up tres veces por la noche a poner a Alexander a hacer pipi, so he doesn't, because now he's 13, he's incontinent. So si lo dejo en la cama, he goes pipi, se la cama floods. And that man could tell you que yo estoy every other night, possibly, si no bañándolo, yo estoy levantándome para ponerlo a ir al baño so he can pee. Yo, no, yo casi no duermo. And I'm a person that needs sleep. Si hay una persona dormilona en esta vida, it's me. I love to sleep. Look, I'll take sleep over anything. My ideal is sleeping 10 to 12 hours a day. No. <laughs> That's how I function at my best. I, I respect that you admit it. No, I love, pregúntale a Felipe, lo mío es dormir. 
Lo great. mío es dormir, levantarme, desayunar, lavarme la boca, hacer hambre, qué sé yo, y volverme a dormir. <risa> Yo me, yo me levanto para desayunar y volverme a acostar. Buena awesome. no have anybody eh, que cuidar ni nada, que es poco. Pero when I have, you know, a little time for myself. No, but that's not... That's life. That's not that you're, you're like, lazy or... You're, no, I'm not lazy. You oversleep. I'm, no, no, I'm not lazy, but I'm No, sleeping. no, 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 sleep. no, but you have so many things to do... También. ...that on the day where you have nothing to do, you're like, all right, I'm no, going to sleep. No, pero yo era teenager. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to, I know you're trying right. to make it put like, yeah, I right, know right, you're a busy woman. Yeah. No, no, no. All right. I, I, Fair enough. Fair I enough. was, I was, tú sabes, pero lo que te quiero decir con eso es que, man, you know, don't come with excuses, come with solutions. Mm. Because the, I, yo tengo un montón de excusas that I could be using right now. I have a whole bag. And, and so do, so does everybody else. I'm not the only one que tiene problemas. 100%. I'm not the only one que, que tiene una situación en la casa. 100%. I'm not the, I'm not the only one. And no one is. Y, la, y, y cuando tú dices eso mismo, no, because trauma. Okay. How about everybody else's trauma también? So you, we're not that special, dude. That's We're why, special enough, but we're not that special. That's why when I encounter situations where like someone, but this is a perfect example and it's happened to everybody and everybody's going to know what I'm talking about. No, que Sally out works at Revienta. Ah! And then it's like, no, but Tonyo, she's going through a divorce. I'm getting evicted. Did I do <laughs> right. that to her? Right. No, I don't care. I don't, I'm not. Right. Sorry, Sally. I don't care. No. I don't. Because I'm not like that with other people. What do you have to do with the fact that I'm getting divorced? What do you have to fact that I got indicted by the federal government? What do you have to do with the fact that I have a child with... You, you understand? You don't Nothing. have to do anything. Nothing. So what right does that give you? Why do I have to give you a break? When you are going through difficulty and you want to take it out on every... Oh, let me give her a break because she's going... She or he is going through a hard time. No. No. Uh -huh. You shouldn't get a break. I'm not saying what you're not going through is valid. What I'm saying is you have no right to get a break because no one gets a break. Deal with it. Pero lo que pasa en Nelson es que empathy is important, pero también empathy can, is not a mobilization. No, I, I'm not saying... I'm not saying... I'm not sympathetic to what you're going through. I know what you're I'm saying. saying it doesn't give you the right to be a victim. Absolutely. Pero lo, lo que te quiero decir con, es que hay gente que dice, no, you're not empathetic. I am empathetic. I feel mm. what you're feeling. I get it. Pero lo que tú dijiste, no, te, no. Eso no te da el derecho de, primero de victimizarte, and then to burden other people with your stuff. No. Yo no tengo el derecho de entrar a mi oficina and be nasty to my clients. I don't because they have their own issues that they're dealing with and they have no reason to carry my no. falta de sueño. Tómate un café y sigue para adelante. No, and when you own a business, at the end of the day, the, your employees are choosing to work for you. Oh, yeah. Your clients are choosing to buy their product from you because they go right. easily go capitalism at the end of the day. 100%. So if you're choosing to come and work here and if you're choosing to come and spend your money here, I mean... I have to show you some sort of courtesy or like, coño, thank you for showing up. Of course. It's the opposite. It's you know? a blessing. Y además, what kind of a person would I feel like? Porque mientras más miserable you insist on feeling, you keep digging the hole. Y te metes más profundo en, y entonces terminas deprimido, terminas, porque todo es, no, porque me siento mal, porque imagínate tú, pero es que mira, pero es que qué sé yo. I've been there though. I get how people feel because I've been there. I've been two weeks on a sofa with panic attacks que no me dejaban moverme. Felipe was like, yo tenía miedo que you were going to be, que yo, uh, que yo no sé qué yo iba a hacer, tener que llamar. My mom was like, tú sabes qué, this is going to pass. Yo quería ir al hospital. And I was like, yo quiero que me, que alguien me, my mom's like, you're not going anywhere. Esto se te va a pasar. Porque lo que va a pasar es que si tú te vas ahora mismo en hospital, you know what they're going to do based on your current status? Te yeah. van a institucionalizar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to institutionalize you. Porque tú no estás bien. Like, looking at you right now, I know this is not permanent, pero una persona que te vea is going to think que tú estás en un estado que this is no turning back. Te van a empastillar, and then what's going to happen to your kids? I was like, espérate, what? I need to get over this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y lo que pasó fue que yo estaba over... It, it, it no era un estado depresivo, Nelson, and this is a, an important lesson para las personas. I had too much on my plate. Mm. I was the happiest I was I had ever been in my life. I, I was the most fulfilled that I had ever been in my life. And I had never fallen. Ni cuando yo estuve con lo de Alexander into such a state que me inmovilizaba. Like physically, I couldn't move. Y eso fue porque yo tenía tantas cosas. Too, too much of a good thing is also a problem. Mm. So you have to pick and choose. 
and there's a right time for everything and you have to choose the most important things. Prioritize that. And focus on that. Y después lo demás. Y después lo demás. But you can't do it all. Because if you try to do it all, por muy bueno que sea, you break down. 100%. Entonces, tú sabes, hay, hay que aprender de todo en la vida. So I can definitely relate. Cuando la gente me dice, no, porque panic attacks. Antes yo no entendía eso de panic attacks. I was like, qué pendeja eso. Like, what do you mean a panic attack? Are you serious? Like, to me, eso era hasta cómico. Because I'm like, what are you, a panic attack? Like, really? You have anxiety? Like, right. Porque yo había tenido episodios de depresivo y qué sé yo, pero nunca al punto de, when I experienced lo que era un ataque de pánico, de que yo tuve que pull over porque me estaba latiendo el corazón and I was going to faint and I was going to, and, and en la casa, I was like, Felipe, call 911. Felipe was like, no, nah, man. I was like, Felipe, call 911. Que me voy a desmayar. Y cuando llegó el, el de eso del 911, dice, ¿qué tú tienes? I was like, no, I feel my chest. He's like, tú tienes catarro. I was like, yeah, I'm a little gripe. He's like, oh, you're good. You're just having a panic attack. I was like, that's it? You're not going to hold me out of here in una camilla, like, and make a whole drama and, like, poner la sirena and tell everybody to move out the way because we have, like, a serious patient here. Like, move out the way. He's like, no, we're good. And I was like, oh. Mm. And then I realized, espérate, if this can be dealt with too. So I started digging into what it really was, and I felt like a piece of crap for doubting that they were actually real, mm. and it's a real issue. Hay personas que sufren de ataques de pánico y, an y ansiedad. And now that I've learned to deal with it, eh, puedo empathize con lo difícil que deal with it, pero antes no lo sabía. No, but I, it's real. I've, but it can be dealt with. Of course. Of course. I, um, before... Before I had my legal situation, I used to judge people who, who had criminal records. Most of all, my father. I labeled him as like, yo, oye. Claro. You, you screwed up. Mm. Because tu eres, you know, that's your problem. That's the kind of guy you are. Right. And God was like, oh. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> You're one of them. <laughs> you know? And now I understand that things aren't, I've said this before, things aren't so black and white. Sometimes things are gray. So you do have to walk a mile in, in that person's yes. shoes to be able to to not judge them, but to be able to understand, fully understand that situation. Having been through it, though, I mean, now it's like, what excuse? Not, now it's even further because right. I got out and I had a viral video on every platform within four months. No madre. So I remember that. Coño. I it's like, that. okay. And mind you, this is coming from a guy who is, if I tell you the stories of the things I was going through, like... My life financially, we're still trying to figure things out. Got it. Um, like, I was... F that, that month where I had that supervisor, like, I was two months behind on rent. Like, my life was a f mess. Claro. And it... I think it's just... It goes to show you, like, things... You're so much closer to a different life than you think. Absolutely. My friend Arlene, she's an actress. She posted something on her story yesterday that I was like... I had to, she I couldn't share it, so I had to screenshot it and I had to tag her. It said, You're one move away from everyone saying that they believed in you from the start. You know what I'm talking about. Those people of who course. don't believe in anything, right? That they're, they're <laughs> like, and then you do that one thing and things change. I just saw me, I knew it. Oh, really? <laughs> and let me tell you, it's uh those messages I get from people that, that met me over there and they're like, Man, bro, you did it so fast. This is so inspiring. Because in there we get forgotten about. Of course. Totally, like... I know. I mean, I did it. I knew... I had friends that went to jail, and I was like, well, go on your brother. It's kind of like your problem. Sorry, bro. And now it's like, it's my problem, bro. <laughs> Yo. And how about this? When I went in, ChatGPT didn't... wasn't a thing. And I got out, and everybody's using ChatGPT. Damn, madre. You know how I felt like I lost 10 years of my life? <laughs> it's so weird. Everything moves so fast. I got out, and I was like, wow. Oh, like, that's crazy yeah so having walked in somebody else's shoes i can empathize i understand mm. it's still not an excuse though exactly and that's how you can say it's still not an excuse because you've actually been through it before i could say bueno that's not an excuse but it's not coming from a, a, a an honest place because you really don't know if it really is or not. i know now it's not 150 really percent having been through it that's the only you have to walk a mile in that person's shoes and then do it anyway, so you can be like, all right, what now? <laughs> right. You said before, I'm not like you. Right. Now I'm exactly like you, mm -hmm. and I did it. So yeah. what's, what's, what's going on? Yeah. I'm telling you. 
Exactly. It, so much of it is awareness, and I think we, we talked about this when you were, like, being aware, just right here. As long as you're aware. Yes. And so many people are not aware. No, because we're very distracted all the time. Everything is everything is designed to be distracting and keep us, you know, en otra cosa, en otra gente, mm. even social media. Uno va a ver, y a veces, a veces I'm like, ah, just five minutes. 15, 20 minutes later, I'm already in an account de otra cuenta, de otra cuenta, because I keep put, I keep clicking on the tags and I keep clicking on profiles. I'm like, what the, What am I doing? I'm lost. And so se me olvidó what, what I was looking at because en el momento que tú hiciste click, había un sponsored ad de una cartera. Entonces ya I'm already Bro, don't looking. even get me started on those. You go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> a I'm, beauty blender. I'm on Facebook Marketplace for six hours looking at stuff I'm not going to buy. I know. And I'm like, man, this is such a good price. I'm like, man, why am I looking no, at this? Exactly. I know I want this, but I'm not going to buy it. What am I, you know? We're distracted. Bro, offer up. I got scroll on offer up for hours. <laughs> I deleted it. Looking. I have to. I have deleted to delete. it. It's I deleted it. I was, I deleted it. It was Especially it was because for me. I'm always looking into like studio equipment yeah, yeah, now I and know, stuff. Yeah, I know, I know. Bro, I found, I, I know you don't know, but there's like a little thing where you can switch. It's called a switcher. You can, He's using it, but. Like, the camera? Gonna, Yes, yeah. it's it's a switcher. The angles. And brand new in the box, it's like 300 bucks. And I, oh, there you go. <laughs> he just did the thing. Anyway, so brand new in the box is 300 bucks. I yeah, found it for like 100. I was like, oh my God, I'm not going to buy it. What am I doing? You know? I know. I know. But it's, it's designed to be like, everything's designed to have your attention. And we lose track of ourselves and actually, and mm. you know, focused on, on, on you. Uh, oh, man. It always makes me think like, bro. What's what's the like? Why can't people just like get it that it's bad? Why, why does everyone when they're sitting and eating dinner that everybody's on the phone? Why doesn't somebody look and be like, guys, everybody's on their phone? Yeah. Don't, we talk about that. Again, Felipe a, and I talk about awareness. that. Awareness. You're so unaware that you yeah. don't look up for a second. Look around. Like, Man, my kids are on their phone. My wife's on her phone. I want to. Damn, bro. That's crazy. We just say something like, hey, guys, can we get off the phone for 10 minutes here? Because the thing is that you could be on your phone and you are on your phone. You know All what? the other time that you're not sitting down with your family for dinner. No. Yeah, why do you have to use that time also? 100%. We're on our phones all day. No. And then another one. You text somebody, they don't text you for four days. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bro, que clase. <laughs> that, that is like a kick in the nuts to me. Bro, bro. I seen you. See, I seen you. As you've been on like line for you like, post forty stories, you're online. You didn't want to. You DM reply. me a reel. You're DMing me a funny cat meme, and I text you or I call you and I so come on, bro. Oh, I was busy. Oh, you get busy, ni busy, bro. Sometimes I tell people, I saw you. I can't get. I'll get back to you. Porque, <laughs> no, porque hay gente me manda cosas larga, you know. Oh that I gotta look into. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. And um, or to read articles. I love, I love that about you. You you were even when we weren't like really friends like that. I would DM you stuff, and you'd always be like, "Oh, this is cool. Thank you." For, and then you would talk about it on your stories. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like to. I admire that. I don't engage with everybody, but the people I do engage with, I like I actually look at whatever. Right, yeah. because I I understand that they're sending me for a reason. No es más para joder. They're sending it to me because I gente que me dice, "What are your thoughts?" But I gente que ni siquiera dice eso, but I already know what they're sending me. Es porque right, right. it's inspirational or it's funny. Or it has or to it, do with the stuff you talk about. Right. right. So so I'll talk about it. Um, not everything, but a lot mm. of things. Uh, you know, and, and, and that's, I, I take interaction with people seriously. Mm. You know, I'm not the most social person, contrary to what it may look like. Mm. I'm not. I give off that impression, but I'm not necessarily that social in my personal life. But I like socializing. Man, I don't know if that makes sense. What time do you have to socialize? <laughs> 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 with, with what time are you going to socialize? That's true, though. Um, anyway. <laughs> Pero te digo que I like to socialize. With, I like to, I mean, I like to effectively communicate interact. with people. Interact. You like to interact with I people. I like efficient communications. A mí no me gustan necesariamente las comunicaciones meaningless. So mm. if I communicate with people, I want it to be as effective and... and, and right. Awareness. Mm. ¿Me entiendes? Um, so that's that. Like, pero de, de, definitivamente, yo no soy una persona amiguera. Like, de tener muchos amigos, estar en la, en, 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 you know, ajá, la comparsa. Not me. Mm. And that's uh, a turn off for a lot of people. Que si les gusta esa situación. And they would like to include. Porque me ven como que, ah, you know. No. Mm. No. I mean, in all fairness, we we would communicate very sparingly. And we didn't really, I wouldn't say we became friends until for a while. It took. 
Because we met around... Met. Yeah. <laughs> we did, well... Meeting online is a thing nowadays, I guess. Whatever. Ah! Ah! No. Right, I got you. I got it. Yo! Good thing you're tall. Good thing you're tall. <laughs> I remember the first time we interacted was right after... And it's funny. I forgot how I found your page. But I did. It was right after uh, July 11th. Yeah. Which, funny enough, is how I found this whole community. Because I wasn't online like that. I don't know if you know my story. I had a, a yeah, video go crazy. Video. Yeah. Que me estaba cagando la madre de Biden y todo mundo. <laughs> um, and then I found your page and I found a few other pages. This is the thing. Um, yeah, my videos became a little viral right before July 11th on TikTok. And then people started sharing them. And then I think that's how, you know, my account kind of like... Started growing. Yeah. And, uh, pero sí, and... and Mucha gente piensa, tú sabes, que yo soy más social de lo que realmente soy. Y, y, y no es por mal, es que it's just the way I am. Yo no mm. soy una persona, yo, yo, a mí me encanta interactuar y hablar con las personas y todo eso, pero no soy, por ejemplo, de salir a fiesta con la gente. Mm. You know what I'm like, yo soy más de salir a un café con alguien que a una fiesta. Me too. I'm Especially porque ya yo no estoy para fiesta después de las 12 yeah, de la yeah. noche, I'm, I'm done. ¿Me entiendes? Y eso de ir a la playa con la gente, 12. you know, I have Bro, limited access to people in bathing I'm already suits. like, I'm no, yo, already... yo, I limit my access. Todo lo que, mira, especialmente con personas que yo no tengo mucha confianza, like people de trabajo, right, right, professional, right. cosas así, I limit my access en lo que tiene que ver fiesta donde hay alcohol, gente en trusa y traje de baño, all that is, uh, tú me entiendes, I, I limit it a lot, because yo siempre he dicho, if I go to a party at the beach with my boss, yo no quiero, yo no quiero ver a mi jefe en un speedo y después tener que face him in the office, and <laughs> that's awkward, and I don't want him to see me in no bikini, you know what I'm that's saying, funny. like, yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. weird, because there's a certain level que ya se cruzó to a personal interaction that I don't, by yeah, yeah. Me, una amiga mía dice que ya estaba en el nudist beach una vez, y que ya está, y que ya está, she goes to the nudist beach, <laughs> No va conmigo, tú sabes, eso del nudismo no... I would, I mean, bro, if you're, bueno, para la mujer, but for women it's different. No sé, pero espérate, but ella anyway. estaba en la playa and with her husband y entonces dice que, que están ahí, you know, sunbathing y, de, y del agua sale un señor, it's her boss, dude, y viene y la abraza y todo. Ah. Ah. El viejo en cuero por ahí, bro, un nudista, y just, salió de la playa y, so le, and I'm like, I would quit my job. Yo no puedo. Yeah, I can't look at that guy in the eye so, on Monday. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah, hey, uh, <laughs> it's all of you it's a lot of you um, or not oh my but God. you know what I'm saying that it's so you <laughs> in all its splendor and glory have you seen Eurotrip the movie no you no. haven't watch it there's a scene that has to do with this that's really funny oh my god there's, a, there's a scene where because they're, they're going across Europe they go to uh, Holland or Amsterdam or something and they go to this beach that's like oh the tourists where all, where all the hot tourists go is the hot tourist women go yeah. to be, it's a nudist beach. Oh, nudist. So what ends up happening is that's where all the guys go <laughs> looking for women and there's no women there. <laughs> oh my God. It was disturbing and hilarious. <laughs> and then it, it turns out like this, the, anyway, where all the women go to this other beast that nobody knows about. It's all women. Like all the men and all the women are two different. Anyway, it's really funny. Watch the movie. It's hilarious. I watch it. Yeah. But the thing is, yeah, like after I see, like I don't like to see people drunk because después tú sabes todo, or me, I, I don't get drunk, pero, mm. you know, even tipsy. Like, a mí no me gusta entrar en esos ambientes because then you have a side of people that I don't want, I don't want to have to judge you based right, on, right, right, right. on what you did while you were drunk and then I'm like, damn, this is awkward now. <laughs> like, you know, like, because people say stuff. You know, at like holiday parties, they people do. get drink and you they get do. drunk and then they say a couple things and you're like, damn it. Yeah, yeah. It's over. Now I gotta quit my job. You know? No. I gotta I... block you from like <laughs> it's over. Like so yo trato de limitar like the levels of interactions with certain people, people. just because I wanna keep it in an event where we can keep on interacting. I don't want I don't wanna risk mm. going into like una situation that I'm like when people Absolutely. start getting personal and telling you personal stuff and it's like yeah. too personal. Like, yeah, yeah. I understand if we're friends and we're talking about, pero si yo trabajo contigo and that's all we do, we're not really friends. We're just co-workers. Right. Y tú me empiezas a decir cosas personales. You know, <laughs> now I gotta like care or pretend I care. I gotta get involved. That's funny. Um. So I, I it's weird. It's I'm weird that way. Like I, and I love interacting, but I limit my interactions because mm. I get too involved sometimes too. I feel you. I get too involved. And I 
I don't like to I don't like to do that. It mm -hmm. takes too much of my energy. And people don't appreciate it. You seem like are you ponte esto un poco. You seem like an empathic person. Is that maybe I'm very empathetic. E no, I mean like an empath. You know what that is? Oh, okay. Like you know what the term que, que tu yeah, yeah, yeah. you absorb kind of the and, and people don't appreciate it. Mm. That's been my experience. Most people don't. So and you know, como yo no voy a estar encontrando the one percent que sí aprecia lo que uno hace, I right, just right. I assume no for everybody. Porque tú sabes, sadly, uno no puede tampoco estarse tirando los problemas de la gente encima right, porque right, right. You, tú coges lucha, después ellos siguen con su vida, siguen and con la rumba and you're like, you keep on, yeah, hundred percent. My friend Randy, that he just started a podcast. We help him do it here in the studio. He he says something that he says, your attitude is yours and no one is allowed to take it. For real, dude. Bro. For real. I remember the first time he told me that years ago, maybe that's, like a decade. That's crazy. I said, wow. <laughs> Bro, that's gold. That is gold. Think But about also, that. no one is forced to put up with it. That's the other side of the coin, I guess you could say. Right? No, but... Dude. That's 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 awesome. It's true. Your attitude is yours, and no one's allowed to. Take yeah, it. own that. I mean, own think, it. You can't let anybody have that power over you at the end. No, of the day. you just can't. Why would they? Mm. Nadie te resuelve nada. Nadie te va a hacer nada. Bro, cuando that's tú estaba, why... dime. Who was there? ¿Quién te ayudó a, a, to get my, back? My to mom and my back? sister. That's ah, it. bueno, entonces. Are, yeah, you see? No, let's let's get you to it. it down. Let's get to that day. And this is hard. And I still haven't even processed this. I don't. I don't remember if I've said this on camera. The day I get sentenced, ka, eight months. I look back, my mother and my grandfather, empty. You know what empty is? Two chairs out of maybe the 50 chairs that were there. My mom and my grandfather. My other and my grandfather died a week before I got out. Oh my god. That to me, it burned. Do you know what's like seared into my brain? It's seared. I'll never forget that. Those were the only two people who were there. ¿Qué me importa a mí lo que diga este, lo que opina el otro? You know what I mean? Like, dude, you're not there. You were, you, if you weren't there, am I lost? No, you don't matter. It's not, it's not fair for you to even try to be there at a high point. No. I respect everybody, but do yeah. I value your opinion? Probably not. It's not, it's not important. What's that? What's that? Uh, uh, you know, they're abducting people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Aliens, the tractor beam. It's <laughs> happening. It's happening. That, those were the aliens that were from uh, from Bayside the other day. Do <laughs> it, What happened, dude? Like I, I I tuned that out. What happened with the aliens in Miami? No, nah, those were just shadows of people walking by in life. Ah, okay, it was okay. all fake. But anyway, what was it? What was I saying? <laughs> uh, you were talking about Linda, your grandfather. Okay, my grandfather. Passed. So yeah, that reel of Deion Sanders, the you know Deion Sanders, a football player that he's a coach now. Yeah. You, you know that he's a coach. He's coaching his son in in, the, in university now, the University of Colorado. Okay. Uh, there's I a didn't know that. Well, yeah, Deion Sanders, the player. He's there's a re viral real hit of you know that beat. What's the beat of that song that Nas uh, Ether? You remember the song where he's like dissing Jay Z? Mm -hmm. You remember that song? So it's the beat of that song, and okay. he says, "Look at me. What about me makes you think? I think about I think I care about your opinion of me." <laughs> <laughs> I say, you know, what a baller. I know. Look at me. What about me makes you think I care about your opinion of me? Exactly. Yo me paso eso por el forro. Right. You're like, who cares? Yo me limpio con esto. He's a Hall of Fame uh, defensive back with, with, a, with a Super Bowl ring for the Dallas Cowboys. He has a World Series ring with the Yankees. I don't know if you knew that. He, he played with both teams at the same yo time. Yo de, de sports, sé lo que sé. Oh, no, que... I don't watch sports now, but no, I, pero you know I, I, more respect, than I, do. I respect greatness. Like, I, people who did big things, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Bro, he has a Super Bowl ring and a World Series ring. He won it in the same, like, bro, that's great with two of the best teams ever. Yeah, and now I'm coaching my son? Right. Now my son <laughs> is in line to be as good it's as like, I am? what? <laughs> Take a couple seats <laughs> with your opinion. Bro. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. no, and more when you're that kind of person where like the media asks you triggering questions to catch that moment of you, you know, but whatever. Right. It is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, of course. I don't subscribe to it. It's, man, you know, it, like, but I had a friend of mine named Dace on the podcast a while back. He's like, whatever energy you project to me, <laughs> bro, I'll project it right back. That's right. not mine. You gave you tried to give that to me. That's yours. That's so yours. I'm gonna give you it right keep back. That. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
my attitude is mine and no one's allowed to take exactly. it. Exactly. You have to be... Exactly. The thing is, like, it has to bounce right off. Exactly. You... My, I, I remember... What, 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 I forgot the exact saying, but you just have to be a reflection. I am a reflection of what you are to me. Right. Whatever energy you project to me, I'm going to project it right back. Bounce. Take Bye. It. Take that somewhere else. Yeah. Now, if you're respectful, if you're kind, if you're courteous, you have not... That's what you're going to get from me? Yeah, claro. You know what I mean? Exactly. For sure. If people learn that lesson, just that valuable lesson, que tú sabes, you get what you put out there. Oof. Pero oh. literalmente, you get what you put out there. And I'm a firm believer that whatever you put out that's negative, you get back tenfold. Whatever you get back that's positive, you get back a hundredfold. You do. Like, you do. You do. And you feel Because it. Because there's more good than bad. Always. 100%. I agree that. I'm not I uh, agree with that. Or else we would all be... You know, this would look like Book of Eli or something. You know? <laughs> Dude, we're privileged. Man. They're making a second part of that, apparently. I don't we're know. privileged. Very lucky. The best time in humanity to be alive in one of the, the best cities on the planet, Miami. Ciudad que progresa, Hialeah. Hialeah, la ciudad que progresa. No, we're in Doral now. La gente, tú sabes, porque tú sabes cómo se pone la gente. We're physically in Doral. Estamos en Doral. We're in Doral. Yo yes. tengo un, un, I know people that they're like, no, yo vivo en Coral Gables. I'm like, no, you don't, dude. <laughs> no, no and the funny thing is I live on 4th Street and 56th Avenue so that's four blocks away from Coral Gables but it's not Coral Gables on my driver's license it says Coral Gables I know I know just like but my mom lives in Sweetwater Belén the Colegio de Belén now all that it's a Sweetwater but that the Colegio de Belén and um, and antes eso no era Sweetwater right you know like, I yo vivo por Belén. Well, you live in Sweetwater. What's <laughs> going on? And I love how we all claim our little pocket of, of Miami. You know, Las Aguaceras, Jaelia, SQ, la, la Provincia de Sinueve, Jaelia, <laughs> Dorazuela over there. I you know. know. Yeah. Little Managua over there, Sweetwater. I know. I Everybody's got their own little their thing. Their own little pocket. I know. And it keeps evolving. That's a beautiful it thing does. about this place. I like this place. So much diversity. So many people from different places. Mm. So much good food, dude. I can never leave just because of the food. It's so great. The food's good. Like when you go outside of Florida, damn, the food sucks in a lot of places. Food sucks everywhere. And almost everywhere. Uh, the pizza Chicago in New York, has of course. Food. Uh, I mean, I haven't really, I, like the, I, I like haven't been food. to Chicago in like two years. I like years. the food in Chicago. I haven't been there in a while. The pizza in New York is amazing. The I Chinese, the, pizza in New the York. Chinese food is disgusting. I would, really? We have the best Chinese food in the country. Like, Do we? Hands down. You think? Think? No, I, I have never had it in California. My father's a truck driver. I've okay. been to 47 states. I can tell you and right now, we have the best Chinese food in the really? country. Really? 100%. 100%. And then Cuban food, that's not even... No, no. Cuban following. food, no. Tampoco. That's not because, even... Because yeah, yeah. That's, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. No, you're, right, because, you're right. You're right. You're right. Because we, you know... Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. 100%. We, Chinese food, we have it locked. locked. Uh, maybe... What else? I can't really think sushi or sushi is really good. Jamaican food is good here too. Oof. Well, no, it's got to be too. I mean, yeah. that's not fair. Curry. Jamaican, Jamaican's here. Curry, goats. Oh, curry. Curry chicken. You know what curry I Curry anything. Curry is basically carne con papa. Basically, yeah. Bro, what is that? <laughs> La especia. I remember a though. teacher of mine said she went to the Middle East one time and they were fed her curry and she's like, bro, this is what we that's, eat. That's a way to simplify it. No, but carne, curry's carne con papa. It is. No, no, but check <laughs> this out. <laughs> and in Jamaica, a, would be like, what an instance. It's, his, it's historical, but check this out. In the Spanish Inquisition, when all the Arabs came to Spain, to uh -huh. Spain, they influenced the cuisine and then lo trajeron para acá. Okay. Ah. I didn't know that. There you go. Ay, yo no sé ustedes with your history, man. <laughs> Ay, Felipe se va sabiendo horas viendo madrileños por el mundo. Bro. He loves that show, dude. Mi abuela and he, le has, he knows eso. so much history. Porque, mi abuela, encanta. mira, te dijo abuelo. No, no, yo no dije eso. <laughs> mi tía también lo ve, mi tía también. No, but yeah. But How old your aunt? <laughs> 60? 72 60 I'm too, I'm one, okay I'm sorry <laughs> tia I gave you She's extra, extra old, years but yeah. no but pero, it's a good show but te digo que history there's a lot of history yeah, yeah. in todo he watches a lot of history and um, it's good it's just that tu sabes it takes a lot of energy to sit there and absorb the it information does. It does. and I have my undiagnosed or self-diagnosed ADHD <laughs> that I can't deal with so I have to be moving around definitely I feel you it's hard day I would love to be here and do a Joe Rogan podcast for three hours. I really would because, like, it's easy to talk to you. It better be. No, of course. <laughs> That's why I invited you. Ay, so, es la tercera vez que, está, que estoy en, con Nelson en un podcast. Y es la única que hizo 
El uno, versión 1, versión 2 y versión 3. Versión yeah. online, el otro estudio, ahora este. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only person. And that's forever because... We'll keep cooperating. <laughs> no, this is not the last time. I mean, I have, I, I, I I have a have criminal you. record. I don't, like the, I don't like the word cooperate. <laughs> 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 Let's keep that name. I, you know. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, no, but that's, that's cemented because that... I, I know. You know? Yeah. I didn't have... I had maybe like three other people on audio. Maybe, if that. So that's, that's like... That's awesome. Yo, you're literally... We'll do this like every every six, seven months or something. So that Let's way you it. can keep coming back and you're like, oh my God. Oh my God. I know. Oh my God. Hey, I'm a regular. <laughs> you're my Joy Diaz. Uh, dude. No, I'm serious. Mind. Like Joe Rogan. You know how Joe know, Rogan know, has, has like that, that, has that, that, that the, little, the little feedback there. You're my Joy Diaz. You know what? Esto, when I start doing something more... more Solid or like yeah, you gotta con come. consistent. You gotta come. Ah, you gotta when together, yeah, of course. You gotta come. Yeah, definitely. This is oh, fun. by the way, she she throws a podcast in there every once in a while on her YouTube channel, as, yeah, as if she didn't do enough. Yeah, but it's um, uh, it's not a thing. I mean, thank I mean, you, but it's not a thing. I mean, you've you know what I'm saying? Okay, it's not a thing. I mean, that's just the thing. You do it on occasion? Yeah, I do it on occasion. I do it cuando me de pronto I go just catches yeah, yeah, my yeah, yeah, attention I and I actually have time because so many things catch my attention but you know they know the info dude yeah, like yeah, it's crazy. Actually. But I know I'm working on it. I'm working on structuring more. Mm. Tengo I've had so many important projects that need to have my attention mm. porque son they're fundamental in me actually achieving more time for myself. 100%. This needs to happen in order for me to actually be able to let go a little bit. Mm. So, you know, in la vida, todo es un give or take. Yeah, to yeah. go to the next level, tú tienes que aguantarte y decir, bueno, eh, how do I get there? Right. What kind of energy do I need to get there? Okay, everything else needs to be set aside for a minute till I get there. 100%. Y después, para el otro, what do I need to do? So, it's a little, you know, poco a poco. Yeah. We're moving on up. Lo que pasa es que a veces hay que trabajar en silencio, you know? Definitely. You know how that's that very important. You know what that is. It's not about the world. Really, doesn't need, the only person who needs to be clear on your goals and what you want for life for your life is you. And if you have family, just let them let them in. You know, let yeah. them know what's up, so that way they don't think things. No, you know? <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, I know, I know, I know. Oye, yeah. te pasa? You haven't yeah. called me. Well, whatever. Perdido. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm and not suspicious. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> and it, take it a step further. Enroll them in what you're doing. Try to find ways yeah. to you know absolutely incorporate them. So, Dave, thank you. I think you remember. I always wrap up asking three questions. I don't know if Dale. You're, since we're uh, it's a year later, I would assume some of the answers would be different. I could be wrong, but I'm gonna ask them anyway. So, tell me. Question number one: What inspires you? A life. Mm. Life. Just life. Everything. Everything about life. I remember last time. I believe I said my children. You did. Um, and they're part of my life. Life inspires me. I look around and I've learned to, especially in the past few months, just look at things and stare at simple things. Look at a tree. And uh, there's an exercise I do when I do storytelling, when I do writing for myself, like poetry, spoken word, or just stories, just thoughts. Because I have libretas y libretas y libretas of just thoughts. And everybody that knows me knows that um, the the gift to give me is una libreta. Mm. So I have all sorts of libretas. I have leather ones. I have fluffy ones. I have Bible verse ones. I have bling ones. Like everybody just me da libreta. Speaking of which, your birthday was like a month ago. Oh my god! Yeah, you need happy, to get me a libreta. Happy belated. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do. Um, no, pero en serio. So I just stare at simple things. You're Sagittarius. No, apparently I'm a Capricorn. I don't know what that means. I just know because I've been told that's what I am. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about. You signs. just know that your date falls within the Capricorn range. That's, that's correct. I've gotcha. been told that that's what I am. That means something, and, and that's what I repeat. But I don't. I don't have any confirmation of that. <laughs> you remind me a little bit of my sister. That makes sense. She's a Capricorn. She's a Capricorn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. January 9th. So. But anyway, I stare at simple things and I analyze them. Tree branches. Um, Do you see correlations between things in life? I see that super often. Yeah. So, like, super, super. Yeah. Trees. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the root system of a tree? It looks just like your, your lungs. Exactly Increíble. like your lungs. Increíble. So the, you could say the tree is like the brain. Right. And then the roots are like the lungs. Right. Bro. I'm telling you. Everything is connected. And you didn't even have to eat a mushroom to come. 
come up with that analysis. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah. No, I mean, honestly, like, honestly, I say I go into these stages where I just, and I'm like, cualquiera que, you know, would be in my mind right now would think I'm, like, on drugs. But, okay, you, you have to do that. You have to do that because inspiration comes from that. Mm, inspiration is not something that just visits you. Yeah, sometimes it visits you and you're not in the right mindset to receive it. It's always there, though. If you just get into that mindset and tune in, it's there. You can 100%. tune into it. No, que te, I used to believe, no, que venía y se iba. No, it's always there. La que viene y va soy yo. 100%. You know? 100%. I can relate because I see those, I'm telling you, I see it everywhere. Every time I see anything, it's just like, oh, my God, that's like this and this is like that. I see it. It's all, life is, life is one big reflection of itself. Yeah. I know that's super philosophical, but. No, it's it the is. truth. There is a poste in Okeechobee que lo quitaron hace unos años, pero estuvo ahí por más de 20 años that we crashed into um, many years ago when I was little when we came from Cuba. My mom was driving, patinó, se metió con el postre. Si no hubiese sido por el poste, we would have fallen into the lake. Y, y, y el poste aguantó el... el took the like impact. a light post? Yeah. Y era de madera. Ya lo quitaron. Oh, that's old. Oh, my like God. Super old. Lo quitaron. Because now they're, they're concrete, right? <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Um, pero siempre estuvo ahí el impacto del carro con la pintura roja wow. ahí. Y, y yo pasaba por ahí and I, and I still do now and I think about that and I think about las cosas que han pasado en ese mismo momento and how we all kind of share the space and we don't think about cómo una, el impacto de una persona afecta a otra y cómo yo estuve ahí cuando yo era chiquita y acababa de llegar de Cuba veía las cosas distintas and now I'm an adult doing so much in this wonderful country and it's all been in that space. ¿Tú me entiendes? Como que we all share something and we are so connected and we don't, we take that for granted. We don't realize that. I'm like, ahí no fuimos los únicos que chocamos. Hubo una pila de gente, pero una pila de gente pasó por ahí donde estaba la, 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 el cuño where we crashed. And no, did anybody ever think to look at it and say, alguien se metió contra ese poste. Mm. Alguien le dio tremendo coñazo. You know what I'm saying? Like, did anybody ever notice it mm. that a family crashed there and could have possibly like did anybody ever think of that and this is all the things that I up inside right and I draw inspiration from all those random thoughts and I go into detail about everything that I see that I, that I focus on and that inspires me long long answer to your mm. question super long <laughs> I keep a journal I write in it every night me too I, so I write as often as I can but yeah for sure I, I keep two separate ones. One, just basically saying what happened throughout the day and maybe my thoughts about the, what happened. And that's at night before I go to sleep. And then I also, whenever I can, I haven't been doing consistently I, as I should have, is I write, have a, what I call a future truth journal. So I imagine a moment in my life 10 or 20 years from now and I write about it. Nice. Yep. That's it's, awesome. It keeps me going. And, the, and it keeps the imagination kind of like... That's you know, awesome. Yeah. And you can read it years from now. And actually see what happened. And it's crazy, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Question number two. What's next for day? Everything. The best. The best is next because yo no he llegado a donde yo necesito llegar. That's awesome. Right now, <clears throat> I'm working on next level things that I haven't done. Mm. I want to experiment. I'm always, I've always been very experimental with the things I create. You've seen it. <clears throat> and I experiment with a lot of different ways of saying things. And I want to do something different. So I'm working on that. That's awesome. I'm working on that. And let's see, however, porque total, un día me voy a morir y si no lo hice, I'm going to regret that I didn't right, do right. it. So I'm going to do it. Right. <laughs> no, and I feel like your content is so good and it only gets better with time, so... And of course, if we see content creators who have millions of followers, and their content kind of sucks. Yours, yours has potential, so. Uh, no, it I'm, does. No, I, and thank you. I appreciate it. And I, I'm a firm believer in what I do. Um, pero bueno, vamos a ver, tú sabes. I'm, I'm, yo estoy contenta que it reaches the people that it reaches. Mm. And, and if it impacts those people, and those people find it important enough to share, that para mí ya eso ya, you know. Because I understand the value of Things that are small. 100%. And, and like I said, your your content is unique because I can whip out a video and it could be educational. I'll go whip out another one and it could be super um, funny. The next one could be super serious. You know, so it's... You're on the right path. Un poquito de todo. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Uh, last question. How do you want to be remembered when you're no longer here? As a fighter. I like that. Someone who never, 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 never gave up. Um, yeah, I think that's the word, as a fighter. Mm. But not only a fighter que se pasó la vida peleando, sino a fighter who actually won some battles, you know? I like that. Porque a veces uno, no, I'm a fighter, I'm a fighter. Ah, yo soy como mundo, eh, yo lucho, what, soy una luchadora. Who, who, what fighters do you remember that never won a fight, you know? You only win the ones who... You remember the ones who won big fights. Yeah. Yeah. So, yo no quiero pasarme la vida luchando because I don't want to be just worn out luchando. Because sometimes you say you're a fighter because you're constantly picking fights because you want to be mm. busy. No, I want to really conquistar las batallas. Right, right. 100%. And that's what I want to be remembered for. The great battles that I fought and I conquered. For sure. I can relate. I do want to be remembered for something great. We'll see what that is. Maybe it's for being a podcaster. Maybe it's for writing a great book. And I pray to God it's for my my comic book, which you know I'm. I, told I know you about, that. I know that I told you I'd be super interested in talking to you about the doing the live action. I have a role for you. I know Bro, you told me about I that. Swear it's crazy, God. dude. I just I, we never really see That's each other. Pura, I'm gonna be sixty soon, and then we won't. Get sixty, bro. <laughs> when, when you're sixty, you're gonna look like you're forty. But apuna de. We, we need to get this done. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I do. Urgency. Because I'm not getting any fillers and I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Day, Thank you. How can people connect with you? Spanglish Generation. Spanglish Generation on TikTok. Spanglish Generation on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, pero casi no lo uso. Please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube. We have some content coming up. A little bit of surprises. A lot of people are asking to get more Felipe in my content. Él no quiere. But, you know, yo le gano. Ah. Por, yo le gano. Ya le gano por cansancio. No. Maybe not for Spanglish Generation, but for something else that he, he would really be good at. Y bueno, look it up. If you like it, great. Subscribe, share. Eh, tú sabes, involúcrate. If you don't, move on. No pasa nada. I like that. <laughs> Keep it moving. All righty, guys. Another episode of Montana Method Podcast. Nelson Rodriguez, your host. Special guest, Spanglish Generation. Day. Push it to the limit. The world is yours. If you are not chasing a dream, my friends, life is meaningless. I'll see you on the next one. Say goodnight to the bad guy. I've been out here hustling all my life. Every day we get into it. Really out here in these streets. That's day and night. Like there's nothing to it. When I was going through it, dog, I never got your call. I never asked for nothing, no. Promise I'ma do it. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Came from rags.